I want you to do some experiment and maybe start with yourself. Go out in the street, just any single day, and meet any random guy, even your own friends, anywhere, and ask them this question. Guys, what's your vision? And look at their faces and look at the answers that they give you. If you find someone who is going to look you straight in the eye and tell you exactly what their vision in life is, articulate enough and so inspiring that you want to help them, you will see that there's something different about that human being as compared to the rest of the guys. However, I challenge you and I warn you and I dare you and I predict that there's going to be very few of those people that you're going to find. Actually, there's a study that has been done and a book has been written about it. It's called What They Don't Teach You at Harvard. And I'm going to explain some something about that. And it categorizes people into three categories. There's a huge category of 80, 80 I think 84%. And then there's a smaller category of 13%. And then there is a small top-notch category of 3%. The 3% in any room are the ones who know what their vision in life is. In these episodes, we're discussing the importance of having your own personal vision, but what have you, what can you do to make that vision become a reality once you've downloaded it? Stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. The name of the man or the name of the author is Mark H. McCormack. He wrote a bestseller some years back and uh, the bestseller is called What They Don't Teach You at Harvard Business School. It's a very instructive book that I would actually ask you to go and uh, get a copy and uh, just go through it and read it. In this book, he talks about these three categories of people and of course he's talking about goal setting, he's talking about vision and mission and so on. He's talking about being intentional in life. He's saying that in any group, okay, maybe it's a study that was done, not just in any group. There's a study that was done, I think, in 1979. And uh, in this study, they interviewed a business class, uh, graduating business class, and they asked them to write down their goals and maybe become intentional about life and so on. And it wasn't a requirement. They just said that just go and do it and uh, these guys were graduating so they left but 10 years later i think they tracked these people down and they wanted to find out how those guys were doing and they found those three categories of people and that study has been replicated and it's found in very many groups groups group, groupings of people and even today if you go to any room any group of people any group of people who are gathered in any room and you ask them or maybe just interviewed them you find that there's these three categories of people. The first category are those guys who are basically visionless. They are just living to pay bills. Day one, day two, day three, day four, nothing changes. They are looking for the end of the day, the sun going down, and at the end of the month, the paycheck coming in. That's just about it in their lives. But then they have this smaller percentage 13% who are looking at life with an idea that there's got to be something bigger in life than this cycle of paying bills. That's the 13%. And they have done nothing about it, but it, it, there's a consciousness in there. 
And then there is the three percent who not only have the consciousness that there's gotta be something better in life than just paying bills, but they do also have intentionality, and it's actually written down in terms of goals, in terms of a vision, in terms of a mission, or even in terms of a purpose statement. It is written down for them, and we are told that in that study, these three percent were doing on average ten times better than these two other groups combined, and the thirteen percent were actually doing twice better. Just having the consciousness alone, just the consciousness of vision alone, they were doing twice better than the eighty-four percent who did not have any consciousness about the vision. But I can tell you this: that the sorriest thing you see on the face of the earth is a human being, the crown of creation, having no vision. And there are very many people existing, and I used to be one of them. Listen, I used to be one of them. Why is this so? You see, I can come out, I can come across as if I am bashing people and so on. But I used to be in the eighty-four percent. I even used to be in the thirteen percent. I can tell you, I, I, I've been there for years, and then I was born there. You know, maybe I wasn't born there because I know very many people are born with this idea of grand things that they want to do, and maybe the environment through which we are raised up, or the systems through which you go through, they force us to have some different kind of outlook in life, and the dream machine of our lives is just tunneled into some kind of pipe where we have uniformity in academia. And if we are not performing in academia, then why dream? So the aspect of dreaming, the aspect of vision, the aspect of goals is basically thrown out of the window because the premium focus in life is on academia. But I used to be there, friends. I used to be in that situation where I had no vision whatsoever. Imagine a human being, a whole human being without a vision. Existing without a vision, and anything that comes close, the semblance of the the closest we come to the semblance of a vision is to pass our exams, maybe primary living examinations, and then you get another vision to pass your second living examinations, and then you get another vision to graduate to have a degree, and then you get another vision to get a job. Progressive, okay. But that is the same thing for every one of us. It can't be, and yet at the back of it all, there's something so powerful that we are missing, and it's the dream machine of having a vision for our own lives, being intentional, directional, and urgent about the kind of lives that we can have. And we are just coming to this consciousness of our, you know vision boards and so on and so forth in these days and in this age. But still. Even in this consciousness of vision boards and so on, there is so much destruction. People wake up and they are distracted from 6 a.m. even before they sleep. They are distracted, and when they wake up, they are already distracted. And it's difficult to find someone just sitting aside and gazing at the vision, closing their eyes and just envisioning the best, the end results, the best possible outcome of their lives. Maybe even for the day, maybe even for the month, maybe even for the year. But what you find is people just living from one task to another. Like I said in the episode yesterday, we are so action oriented, and this action, this activity, doesn't have insight. It is just activity upon activity upon activity upon activity. There is no insight. The only thing, the end game is pay bills and be comfortable. That cannot be a vision, and so. I, I used to be in that particular group until such a time that you know several things happened in my life. I joined a church, like I told you, and uh, one of the pastors in that church, actually the the main pastor, used to talk about vision a lot, so much so that it pricked my understanding, it pricked my conscience, and I went out there and I started to look for what my vision was. And let me tell you something, a seeker. Will always find. Probably the reason as to why you do not have a vision is because you've not been seeking to find out what it is. But a seeker always finds. An asker always gets given. 
the one who knocks on a door always has a door open for them. So keep asking, keep seeking, and keep knocking for that vision to be crystallized in your spirit. And so I came across something that helped me to go through the process of visioneering and just crystallizing what my vision in life is. And to me, it has got to be the reason as why I am alive today and have survived very many things because of that vision. It cannot just be to put food on the table and, you know, have children, you know, build a house, retire and die. There's got to be something bigger in life than that kind of a lifestyle. And unfortunately, that kind of a lifestyle is where everyone is disciple to go through. So I wrote down the following things and I say that the following words describe my vision. I remember it as if it was yesterday. And from that moment on, from that moment on, see, there was promise in my life. There was potential in my life. And everyone else has potential and has promise in their lives. But until there is something concrete about the vision, that potential still continues remaining dormant. And the Bible says that my people perish for lack of vision. Or where there's no vision, the people perish and they cast off restraint. So I wrote the following words and I said, The words that describe my vision are this, to inspire hope and enrich lives worldwide. That is my vision. To speak a word in season to those who are weary, that is my purpose. To treasure the significance of every single person, unleashing each individual's unique purpose by providing training, coaching, writing, motivational, talk, motivational talks, teaching, preaching, masterminding, giving of self-inspiration to guide people in living legacies. That is my mission. Those things were raw, by the way. And I've kept refining them and refining them. But from the moment I wrote that down, my life got direction. Light entered into my life. And from then on, some kind of urgency was imputed upon my soul. I had some sort of passion and some sort of pursuit. You know, that my life is going to be like this, ordered like this. But before that, I knew there was something greater in my life, but I, I couldn't just know what it was. Couldn't put my finger on it. And I just kept, you know, missing opportunity after opportunity. My life got focused immediately after I wrote those things down. Let me tell you, you're not going to have this focus on day one. Maybe you're not going to have this clarity on day one of seeking. But the moment you have a semblance, just a semblance, just a whiff, just a sniff, of a vision, your life changes for the better, forever. So my life got focused and it helped me to say no to very many things because let me tell you, this life is filled with very many distractions, very many shiny objects. I saw someone on Facebook the other day saying, when are we going to stop following our passion and start pursuing that which is going to bring food on the table? That is a very dangerous question to answer. <laughs> And I know I left there my answer. But it's, listen, I never became an instant millionaire because I'd already identified my vision, and my mission, and my values. My struggles with finances did not disappear overnight. You see, there are principles, financial laws and principles that we need to apply. And if you don't apply them, no matter what big vision you have, you're not going to become a millionaire. And millionaire is not necessarily a vision. But I digress. But I remember somewhere around 2013, 2012, there I had an opportunity to travel to West Africa, specifically in Ghana, with my family for a two year consultancy gig. And uh, due to my clear vision, I can guarantee you that it was due to my clear vision within two months of staying in that country, and actually, I wasn't even staying in the capital city of the country. Within two months of staying in the southern part of Ghana, within two months, I was sharing a platform with the greatest visionaries and motivational speakers of the country, the creme de la creme of Ghana. They are called Albert and Comfort Okan. That, my friends, would never have happened if I did not have a vision. It would never have happened if I was visionless 
will never have happened if I did not have a mission. But I digress. What we're talking about is this. What do you do when you finally have your vision crystallized? Having a vision, I can tell you, is the easy part. But what do you do after the vision has been crystallized? That is what I want us to discuss in these episodes. And we're going to start discussing them chipping away in the succeeding episodes coming. And I have promised you that at the end of it all, I am going to do another series where I will teach people how to craft your vision. You want to stay tuned. But until then, goodbye. A special shout out to my mentor Jeffrey Howard of Visionary Business University found at mastermindmentor.com who has graciously provided me with the soundtrack and the introductory track to this podcast. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.